discuss the norm space, Wienerck space, the definitions and some fundamental results. To go in deep, to get a bit more deeper results, we require some basic fundamental results theorems. There are four fundamental theorems which are very much useful in developing the theory of norm as well as the Banach species. These theorems are Han Banach theorem, Han Banach theorem, which is uh, basically an extension theorem, an extension theorem. an extension theorem for linear functionals for linear functional on vector spaces. In fact, what we do is we are interested to extend the linear functional from a sub vector space to the larger class of the vector. If we have say z is a vector subspace of x and f be a linear functional defined on z which satisfies certain property or certain conditions are satisfied by the function f may be dominated by another function some sub linear function or something by f then the Hanvenach theorem gives you a guarantee that it can be extended to the entire class x without losing the property. That is the extended functional f delta will also remain linear as well as it will retain the same condition with the function f h over j. Okay? So, this is a Hanvenach theorem we will go in detail. Then another results is uniform uh, boundedness theorem. This theorem is given by Benach and Stenhaus. Benach and Stenhaus Haas is also known as the Benach Stenhaus theorem. And this theorem gives the condition, this theorem this theorem gives conditions sufficient conditions sufficient for for the sequence of norm T n to be bounded to be bounded where the tns are the bounded linear operators from a Banach space x to a norm space Banach space into a norm space say by this is a Banach space and this one is the norm space and this is a bounded linear operators. So, this result basically gives you the sufficient condition when the norm of T n to be bounded. In fact, what is uh, to be shown in this case is if T n be a sequence of the bounded linear operator from a Banach space x to a norm space y which is point wise bounded convergent. then a sufficient condition is uh, obtained by this uh, theorem in the uniform boundary theorem by the Banach Einstein, so that the norm of sequence T n becomes bounded. So, under what sufficient condition the T n becomes uniformly bounded. So, that is why it is also known as the uniform boundedness theorem and this theorem has a tremendous application. Its applications one can see in the summability theory, in the Fourier series, summability theory, 
in Fourier analysis or Fourier series, we can go for this uh, uh, application. Then weak convergence and strong convergence. In this also, we can see the uniform boundary theorem has a tremendous application. Similarly, Hahn Banach theorem gives you the guarantee that norm spaces are sufficiently enriched with the linear functional, so that one can get the uh, concept of the dual very quickly. Okay, concept. So, third one is that open mapping theorem. Open mapping theorem. This theorem states that bounded linear operator from Banach space to Banach space is an open mapping. This theorem says that bounded linear operator t, t from x to a y, a bounded linear operator from the Banach space, Banach space x and y. Okay? From a Banach space x to a Banach space y is an open mapping. That is, it will send the open sets to open set. That is, T sends open sets to open sets. So, when the T sends the open set to open set, it means if T is bijective, then T inverse will be continuous. So, that is, if hence if T is bijective then T inverse is continuous, is continuous. Why? Because uh, we know this map, uh, mapping T, because the T is continuous if and only if inverse image of this, if uh, implies inverse image open open set G is open, where G is open. So, if the T which sends the open set to open set, it means if T is a 1 1 on 2 mapping, then the inverse operator T inverse will also remain continuous. So, in case of this open mapping theorem, we can. Now, and fourth one, we have the closed graph theorem. closed graph theorem that says that this gives a condition under which gives a condition under which a closed linear operator is bounded is bounded. Now, when we say is a closed linear operator, closed linear operator means an operator in which the uh, graph of the operator graph is closed. So, we define the closed linear operator H. Uh, the operator T is called the closed linear if the graph of T is closed. So, operator is closed linear operator. Closed linear means means a T a linear operator means a linear operator T from the domain D T which is a subset of X to by these are norm spaces <coughs> is closed if its graph <coughs> that is g of t zeta of t the set of x y such that x belongs to the domain of t and y is t x this graph is closed 
in the norm space x cross y x cross y x y are norm space and t v linear operator domain d is called them and <coughs> when we say x and y both are <coughs> under which a closed linear operator t from x to y both are Benach spaces both are Benach spaces uh, x and y Benach space then t from x to y or d t of uh, subset of x to y if it is a closed linear operator then the operator t is bounded that is what closed graph theorem is a closed is a closed operator if and only if it is closed and the operator is bounded ok. So, we have these four theorems and this theorem has a tremendous application in the development of the functional analysis and many results can be obtained quickly by application by using this one of the this theorem which is required. Now, we will go in detail and see the one by one Van Benach theorem, uniform boundedness theorem, then open mapping theorem and closed graph. First the uh, Van Benach theorem, we will see the proof and then what are the how the Van Benach theorem can be applied can be used to get the other results quickly rather than for a uh, classical way of proving the results. Okay. So, in order to start with the Hahn Benach theorem or in order to develop uh, theory, uh, proof of the Hahn Benach theorem, we require the concept of the Jones lemma and the related partially ordered set maximum minima and so on. So, first let us see what is the partially ordered set and then we go for this Jones lemma and finally, for the proof for this Hahn Benach theorem. So, <laughs> partially order set partially order set ok. A partially order set a partially order set a partially order set is a set M on which there each defined a partial ordering. Partial ordering that is what is the partial ordering that is a relation a binary relation a binary relation which denoted say by this sign is not less than it is a notation for using the relation ok and satisfy a binary relation which satisfies the following which satisfies the following conditions conditions first condition is we will use the p o 1 partially ordered relation for condition 1 is a reflexive that is reflexive condition that is A is related to A for every A belongs to M. Then second condition is the anti symmetric anti symmetric that is if A is related to B and B is related to A then A must be equal to b that is anti-symmetric and third is transitive transitive property 
if if a is related to b b and b is related to c then a must be related to c so this is, if these three conditions are satisfied then we say the corresponding relation is a partially ordered ordered relation or partial ordering okay so a set m together with the partial ordering is called the partially ordered set okay why partially partially emphasize that our set m may contain some element a b in which neither a is related to b nor b is related to a with the given condition so partially implies that emphasize that partially emphasize that m may contain element a and b for which neither a is related to b nor b z and such an elements are called incomparable element if m contains if m contains elements a and b and b for which neither a is related to b nor v is related to a then a and b are set called incomparable element incomparable elements elements and in contrast if a and b are the two elements they are called comparable if they satisfy either a related to b or b is related to a uh, second comparable a. if two elements a and b are said to be in b in m okay in m are said to be comparable if if either a is less than equal to b a is related to b or b is related to a or maybe both let us see why why it's both suppose this depends on the relation in which the relation is defined if i define the relation a is related to b as a is equal to b then both the relations satisfied okay say over the set of integer if i define the relation a is related to b if a is equal to b then it will be a uh, this condition comparable condition is satisfied now if there may be elements like this we are none of them is to either uh, a is need not be related to b or b need not be related to a then two elements are said to be incomparable elements okay this type of means we cannot say always the two elements are related okay say any two elements are related. suppose i say um, the relation a is related to b if a divides b okay then it's not necessarily always the two element if we pick up the one will be the divisor of the other it's not all all b is the divisor of a okay it may not be possible always clear so this will this is what we are getting this way. okay clear for example 7 and 13 7 neither divides 13 nor 13 divides 7 like that so it depends on the relation and the correspondingly the set m will contain comparable or incomparable elements okay then we go for the totally ordered set totally ordered set or chain a totally ordered chain or chain is a partially partially ordered set partially ordered set such that 
such that every two element of the sets elements of the sets of the sets are uh, set are comparable are comparable for example a partial error says that every two elements of the sets are compressed. For example, if I take set m as a set of integer of natural number sets, suppose natural number, okay, and define the relation A is rated to B if A is strictly less than B. Okay. Then in this part a is less than equal less than or equal to b okay then a is rated to b this is rated to b if a is less than equal to b okay then this is a partially ordered relation partially ordered relation because it is reflexive every element is equal to itself. So, we can say every element is rated to A itself. If A is rated to B and B is rated to A, then A must be means if A is less than or equal to B, B is less than or equal to A, A must be equal to B. It is transitive. If A is less than or equal to B, B is less than or equal to C, then A must be less than or equal to C. So, it is a relation. Then it is also a totally set order set because if I pick up any two arbitrary elements of this set means two in natural number, then one can always decide whether one is less than equal to uh, other or one is greater than equal to other means either a is less let, less than equal to b or b is less than equal to b will always be hold good it means a is rated to b or b is rated to one of the condition will definitely hold so this will be a totally ordered set okay okay definitely then there is concept of upper bound and maximum element upper bound and maximum element okay so we say maximum element okay and upper bound of a subset of a subset w upper bound of a subset W of a partially ordered set M, partially ordered set M, P O set, partially ordered set M is an element U, is an element U belonging to M such that x is less than e rated to u x is less than equal to for every u for every x belongs to w okay for every m depending on m u u may or may not exist okay now this is u may or may not exist depends on m as well as w what type of the m and what type of w you are choosing accordingly the max elements upper bound may or may not exist okay for example if i take this uh, x is strictly less than u say suppose all x is less than or equal to u in an open interval okay or in the real line completely then upper bound will not exist for it because it will be the infinite infinity okay like that so this will may or may not exist for that Okay. Then a maximal element, a maximal element of M element of capital M, M is a partial order set, is an M belonging to capital M such that 
such that m is less than or equal to x implies m must be equal to x m must be equal to x okay then such a element is called the maximal element again maximal element not exists because if i take the real line example say let m be the real set of all real numbers with the set of all real numbers and if I define the relation as x is related to y, if x is less than or equal to y, then m is totally ordered set totally order set, but m has no maximal element, but m has no maximal element, okay? because definition of maximal element says if m is less than or equal to x, then m must be equal to x. Suppose I take any arbitrary number as a maximal element and then if this is less than or equal to x, it never implies, it may not imply the name equal to because a number higher than this is possible on the real line. So, that is why it is not maximum element may not exist. However, the maximum in some case the maximum element may also exist. For example, this is a power set let p x be the power set power set means set of all subsets of given S set X of given set X. So, X is given set set of all possible subsets of X means collection of all the subsets of X will give the power set of X and let us introduce the reason and let A is rated to B if A is the subset of B this is rated to be where a and b both are elements of the power set x. Okay? Then obviously, the p x is a partially ordered set and in fact, it will be a totally partially ordered set. Okay? It is a partially ordered set, the only maximum element of this is a partially order. Take any two elements a b either b no this is a partial order set sorry, it is a partial order set and its maximal elements the maximal element will be maximal element will be our entire x. Okay? So, it has a maximum. We cannot say it is totally order partial because if you take a two element one is the singleton set one and the singleton set is two and you cannot say A is a subset of B or B is a subset of A. So, that is why it is only a partially order set is related to if A is a subset of B. Okay. If A is related to B means A is a subset, oh sorry, A is related to B means A is a subset, this is the condition is given. So, if we take the two elements A and B, one should be the subset of the other. Okay. So, X will be the, okay, that is clear. So, this is maximum one element. Okay. Then, let us see these properties are again used and to prove this John's lemma basically. So, John's lemma what it says is we will simply state the John's lemma because it is used in proving the Han Benak theorem. Okay. The John's lemma says let M which is a non empty set be a partially ordered non empty set be a partially ordered set. Okay? Let M be a partially ordered set. Suppose that every chain suppose that every chain
every chain C, I am going to see which is contained in M, every chain C which is contained in M, has N, has N upper bound, this is contained sign, okay. has N upper bound, this is C. upper bound, then m h has at least one maximum element, at least one maximum elements. So, what this Jones lemma says is <coughs> if M be a partially ordered set and which has a property that if I take any chain means totally ordered set and chain is a totally ordered set that is any two elements are always complement. So, if we choose a <coughs> collection of the sets which is totally ordered set, set then this chain has an upper bound that is every chain there is an element x such that x is less than equal such that all the elements are less than equal to x or related to x then such a uh, less than equal to x then then m will have at least one maximum element that if every chain has an upper bound then there will be a guarantee that it will have an upper maximum element okay in fact the jones lemma and axiom of choice they are the same the axiom of choice what they says is that if suppose E is a set and we are considering a choice function from the power set of E to E, then pick up an element E from A, then the C of E will be an element of B. This is the ch choice function okay, and the axiom follows from this Jones lemma and vice versa. Also, okay. So, this axiom of choice and Jones lemma they can be treated as equivalent things. Okay equivalent axioms. We are not interested in the choice of axiom, just we will see the Jones lemma. Okay? So, this is what we get. Now, Jones lemma itself has an application in proving the results of the functional S. The first result is which can be shown with the help of the Jones lemma is we know that every vector space which is a different from a singleton set 0 has a Hamel base, this we know and it can be proved with very quickly with the help of the Jones lemma. Every vector space capital X which is different from a single turn set 0 has a Hamel base, has a Hamel H E M E L, Hamel, Hamel basis. Okay. Proof. Hamel basis we know is x be a vector space if v is a subset of x which is linearly dependent in span of v is our x then we say v is a basis for it is called a, a algebraic basis all the Hamel basis for that. Okay. So, let us see the proof for that. Let us suppose m be the set of all linearly let it means every vector is has a Hamel basis. So, there must be a linearly independent set which spans the x okay, maximum elements. Let m be the set of all linearly independent independent subsets of x. Okay. Consider M be linearly independent subsets of X. Okay. Then we will see first that M is a, a we can define a inclusion defined on a partial ordering only. Okay. So since X is different from 0, it means there must be a non-zero element. So it has so there exists an element X which is different from 0 and in capital X and this single turn set x will be an elements of m 
m is the set of a linear element. This singleton set which is different from 0 will be linearly independent set. So, it will be the elements of m. Okay. So, that so, this implies that m is non empty. So, we are having a non empty set of linearly independent subset of x. Okay. Let us define an inclusion relation. So, all such subsets are there. So, define inclusion relation on m inclusion relation on m that is two sets are there a is rated to be that is a is rated to be if a is a subset of b this is our inclusion relation. So, this transfer the m to a partially ordered set. So, m with this relation is a partially ordered set. Okay. Now, we claim that this is also a totally order set. We claim that it is also a totally that is if I take every chain in this has an upper. So, every chain C which is a subset of M that is if I take a partially order set totally order partially order set in M this positive because if we take the a uh, collection of the subsets a is subset of b b is subset of c like this then take the union so that will become such chain okay so if we take a chain in c one chain in c f, then we claim that every chain we claim that every chain c which is subset of this uh, has an upper bound because again this uh, possible because the union of all subsets of x which are the elements of c because the union of all subsets of c all subsets of c are the elements of c okay so this so every chain has an upper bound. So, by John's lemma, John's lemma m has a maximum element maximum element say v. Now, we claim that this v will be a Hamel base fall. Okay? We claim that v is a Hamel base base for x. Okay, this is our claim. Hamel base for x. Okay, that is the span of v will be this. Okay, let us suppose it's not true. So suppose it is not true. Suppose it is not true. it means the span of b that is span of v is not equal to x it will be a proper subset of x that is what you okay so it means there must be some z so there is there is a z belongs to x minus span of this, but minus span of b minus span of b is it not minus span of b such that the b union z b union z would be linearly dependent set independent set containing b as proper subset. proper subset okay which contradicts the which contradicts that which contradicts that b is a maximal element b is maximal element 
So, this contradiction shows that our assumption is wrong that span of b will definitely equal to x. So, span of b is x. Therefore, the v will be a Hamil base. This proves the similar type of results is also valid in case of inner product space. This we know in case of the Hilbert space inner product that can also be proved with the help of John's lemma. The result is in every Hilbert space H. which is different from singleton set 0, there exists there exists a total orthonormal set total orthonormal set. What is the total orthonormal set? We know the orthonormal set a collection of these points where the inner product x y will be 0 if x is different from y and 1 if x equal to y. So, then this is called the orthonormal sets. Okay. And whenever the set um, this is orthonormal, okay. what is the total orthonormal set? A subset m when the closure of the span m is x, then we say it is a total orthonormal set, is it not? Then in fact, this we, we have defined this thing h like this that m is total in if the closure of the span of m is x. So, this we want in Elbert space there exists a total orthonormal set that closure of the span of m will be h itself. Okay. So, let m be a proof again the proof follows on the same line let m be the set of all set of all orthonormal subsets of H set of all all orthonormal subset orthonormal subsets of H orthonormal subsets of H. Now, since h is not equal to 0. So, this shows it has an element x which is different from 0, okay, because x is, h is not equal to 0. So, there will be an element x which is different from 0 and the corresponding orthonormal subset of h and the orthonormal subset and the an orthonormal subset of H and an orthonormal subset of H is this by where y is equal to x over norm x. So, that the norm of y becomes 1. Okay. So, this will be now, this implies that m is not equal to phi, m is non empty set, set of orthonormal subsets we have chosen and because of this condition m becomes non empty. Okay. Now, let us consider the set inclusion defines a person on m define set inclusion, inclusion relation. So, m becomes a partially ordered set. So, m is a partially order set. So, this gives m a partially order set. Okay. Now, let us pick up its chain. So, let us consider a chain, then this chain will have a upper bound. Pick up the chain pick a chain that is totally totally order set order set 
a picket chain C, which is subset of N. Now, this C will have an upper bound, this C, now this every chain, now this will have an upper bound, because, because why it will have a upper bound? Because the union of all subsets of x, which are the elements of C, because union of all subsets of x, x are the elements of C, which are the which are elements of C. This is upper bound because union of all subsets of x is again in x. Okay, so as an upper bound C because it is the union of upper bound C all subsets of x. This okay as an upper bound because it is the union of all subsets of x in C. In C, okay, because it is. Means C is a set. Consider the union of all subsets of C. Then this will give the upper bound for it. Okay, so this is a upper bound for this. Now, why why John's lemma? This M will have n maximal elements. So John's lemma, M will have have a maximal element say f and will have a maximal element maximal element say f ok. Now, b proof f is a total b proof now f is total in f is total in h, then our result is complete. Suppose, it is not true, suppose f is not total, suppose f is not total in h. Now, there is one result that if a set f is total in h, then there will not be exist any non-zero x, which is orthogonal to every element of f. So, when you say f is not total in a, it means there must exist a non zero elements in a which is h which is tot orthogonal to each element of this. So, we can enlarge the f. So, what we create? So, there exist. So, there exist exist a non zero z. belonging to H such that Z is orthogonal to F. This is by the result which we have proved already that A set is total if and only if there exists no, no non-zero element exists uh, which is orthogonal to this or X belongs to orthogonal implies X must be 0. Okay? That is what we have shown that result. So, according to there will be a non-zero Z which is orthogonal to f. It means, we can take f 1 as f union E, where the E is z over non z. And since z is orthogonal to f, so f 1 will be now a orthonormal set. Okay? This will be orthonormal. f 1 will be orthonormal set which covers which covers or which contains f as a subset as a subset so this is as a proper subset rather than not exactly proper subset it means f cannot be maximal if it is so so m is not total in h so, this contradicts the maximality of f. So, f cannot be maximal element, f cannot be maximal element 
therefore, a contradiction contradiction shows that f is total that f is total in h that proves the result. Okay? So, this is all. Now, there is some one more concepts are which we know lattice. Okay? Now, lattice that may also be used something. What is the lattice? A lattice is a partially ordered set a lattice lattice is a partially ordered partially ordered set M such that any two element any two element any two elements any two elements x and y x and y any two elements x and y of m have a greatest lower bound have a greatest lower bound we write it as denote as denote it by x meet by and a least upper bound least upper bound denote as denote as x joined by so a lattice is a partially order set in which if we take any two element of this then the meet and join they must be the elements of m then such a partial order set is called the lattice okay for example if we take x to be px as a power set of x as a power set of x and let us define the parts ordering as the subset a is less than or equal to b if a is a subset of b then the meet and join both are available then obviously the meet is a b is a intersection b while the a join b is the a union b okay so this meet and join are available so it will be a lattice for this okay thank you that's all so we will discuss next time the remaining okay thanks